We've made an update to the layout and position user interface in Thrive Architect and yes, it is a bit geeky, but let me show you why I personally really like these new features. Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and there are two things I want to show you in this video. If you're using Thrive Architect and you go into the layout and position panel of an element, you'll see that something has changed. I want to show you that number one, really nothing has changed. Everything you could do before you can still do and just as easily. You just got to learn one new trick. And number two, there's now a lot more stuff you can do if that's your cup of tea. So let's take a look. Here is a landing page. I've just put a content box, just a default content box on this landing page and selected it. And in layout and position, here's what's new. We have, instead of just a slider for the maximum width, which is what we had before, we now have width and height settings. That might look a bit complicated at first glance because we have fixed minimum or maximum for both of these dimensions. But here's how this is basically no different from what it was before. What's still the same is that you can go onto this field here and you can click and drag up and down to increase or decrease the value. So before you had a slider where you drag left and right, now you have an up and down drag motion, but you can still very quickly just adjust the width. And the max width is the default setting, which basically says, let this box be at most this wide. So on a smaller screen, it will go smaller, but on a, if there's more space available, it won't go wider. And that's a good default to use. What's different is that we have more options for how to choose for the units you can choose. So you can easily create a percentage max width. Now, for example, if I set this to 50%, then it is 50% of the container it's inside. It's 50% of that width. As the screen gets a lot smaller, then it will still be 50% of its container. Right? So that gives you a bit of extra control with new uh, unit options. And we can also clear our settings and basically go back to normal by just hitting this X. That's a bit simpler than it was before. But we also now have on almost all elements, we have both of these controls. So we have width and height settings. So I can also easily drag here to change the height of this box. And if you're wondering about the fixed minimum and maximum values, let me show you some examples of how they would help. In general, right, this is usually something you will use for kind of more advanced layout tweaking and design stuff. So most of the time you don't really have to bother about this, right? Just as before, we just had the max width slider. You probably rarely have to use anything other than this max width here, if even that. But here's some stuff you can do with these options that make them convenient. Here's an example of a nice three box layout, like three feature boxes. And this is something that can sometimes happen when you work on a template where the template looks really nice, but then you enter your own content and your content isn't nice and uniform. So here we have one of the headings is longer than the others. There's more text in this one. There's the least text in this one. And in the end, each box has a different height and it looks like jagged. It doesn't look as nice anymore as it did in the template. And this is something you can now easily fix with these height settings. So what I can go and do here is I can say, okay, here I've got a box. Let's look at uh, how tall this actually is. And I can start dragging and immediately basically see the value, right? So I can say, okay, let's say uh, 530 pixels. That's the minimum height. I want this box to be no less tall than 530 pixels. And I'm gonna apply the same to the other boxes here. So 530 here and 530 here. And now this is a very easy way to make sure these boxes are uniform even if the content isn't exactly the same. So that's one way to use these settings. Now let's go a bit more advanced to see what the difference is between min, max, and fixed. So the minimum and maximum values do exactly as you'd think, right? They define no wider than this, or at least this tall, and so on. But why? what's like the practical difference between these? Here we have two circles. And first of all, here's how you make a circle. Let's go to the content box and we can do this with the usual controls. So I can go on max width, let's say this is 500 wide, minimum height, 500 tall, and then on borders and corners, lots of corner makes it a circle, right? So a square becomes a circle with a lot of corner rounding. So that's how we have two circles and that's a nice kind of decorative object. 
Now here we have one circle where we have fixed width and height, fixed at 400 pixels each. And we have the other circle which is uh, max width 400, min height 400. And initially these look the same. But let's say I have some stuff in here and let's start working with this image, right? If I have this image and I want this image to be larger, on my fixed size circle, as you can see, the content inside it can push outside the boundary of my circle without disturbing the circle. Whereas if I do the same thing in my uh, max and min circle, you'll see that the circle starts distorting and it basically stops being a circle depending on how much stuff is inside it. And this is something that sometimes for design tweaks, this is exactly what you need, right? You'll basically recognize it when this happens, right? When you have something where you're like, this is supposed to be a square, but now it's not a square anymore. This is supposed to be a circle and it's not anymore. That is when the fixed values come in. And this is also something that really affects the responsiveness quite a lot, because as you can see, this here gets squished together even, even longer because the screen is reducing. Whereas this remains fixed, right? Because it really is fixed. This remains a circle, but we have to do something else about this. So here we have the problem that it gets squished, which may or may not be what we want. Here we have the problem that it uh, drops out off the edge of the screen. And we can choose to do something about it. We can choose to shrink everything down and keep it a circle, or maybe we can choose in day out and position. You know, we can push it over here so it kind of is a cut off circle. But the point is that you have more control over the exact shape of an object or the exact amount of space an object takes up even as the screen moves around. So as you can see, this is, this is pretty geeky, right? And in your usual work of just editing landing pages and things like that, you probably won't be messing with these options a lot. But for our designers, for designing the templates, it opens up some cool options and in a pinch, this is a good place to look. If something just doesn't look quite right, these options give you more possibilities for designing what things look like on your page. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and this new feature. Give it a try and let us know what you think by leaving a comment below.